50% of new nurses are involved in a patient safety event or critical incident. Now, this was reported in 2020 by Kentrell, Mariani, and Linghetti. Only 23% of new nurse graduates are safely able to recognize urgent changes in condition or identify appropriate responses to manage critical changes in a patient condition. Now, this was reported in 2017 by Kavanaugh and Sweda. Here's the sad part. The evidence still says that we have a large gap when we look at how our new nurses are practicing the clinical decisions that they are making and the adverse events that patients are experiencing. Well, we're continuing to look at alignment between our AACN essentials, our NLN, nurse educator competencies, and those QSIN standards. Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're happy that you're back as we continue to support you on your journey towards nurse educator excellence. We know that there's a lot of content to look at when you're preparing for the CNE exam. Our mission here is simple at Dr. Sellers Educate. It is to support you on that journey every single step of the way until you are successful, no matter how long that takes. That is our service guarantee. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. That way you'll be notified right away as soon as a new episode is released which usually happens every week. We also want you to pull out your resources. One of our core philosophies and ultimately our mission is to align evidence-based teaching strategies with the content that we integrate, the curriculum we develop for each of our programs. What that means to you is that you can go back review the content in Billings and Halstead, that's our primary textbook, to ensure that you're closing your knowledge gaps and that you have full comprehension of concepts that we talk through every single week right here on our YouTube channel and also on our podcast. We release episodes there as well. And it is Dr. Sellers Educate also on Spotify. All right, so let's go ahead and dig into our content. We've opened up our conversation today, really centered around that alignment between three very important um, organizations that guide our practice in nursing education. And the next step I want you to take, if you haven't looked at the QSIM website, we're gonna look at that together, but I wanna make sure that as you're thinking about the content to help you close your knowledge gaps, that you are going to those primary sources, okay? Those are the ones that are gonna help you really clarify any muddy points that you have, and I want you to take notes on that study worksheet. If you haven't printed it out, um, you can always take notes on a regular sheet of paper, but we like for you to have that study worksheet. First and foremost, because it provides structure for you. There's a date that you're gonna put. There's a space for that on the worksheet. And second of all, we know that you're more likely to retain information when you actually write it down. Okay, so we want you to be engaged in our learning process that we're going on together. We know this is a journey and we're gonna support you until you are successful on the CE exam. All right, so let's go ahead and share the screen so you can see the actual website. So this is the QSIN website, QSIN.org, you can see is the location. And when you go to their homepage, um, you're gonna see uh, sections that you can click on and look at more and have more comp comprehension and more detailed look at some of the content that they have developed. And if you have any questions about any of the content here, you can see the contact information here, the email that you can use. And for purposes of our crosswalk, because that's the journey we're on, we are utilizing the QSIN AACN crosswalk that was already developed based on the newest essentials, which was published in 2021, They've already done an excellent job of alignment between the QSIN standards and competency statements and the 2021 essentials, both for the pre-licensure and the graduate QSIN statements. And in this episode, we're actually going to be taking a look at a, a few of both, okay? In the previous episodes, as we take a look at our um, crosswalk, we have only looked at pre-licensure, but given the fact that we're going to be looking at evidence-based practice, there were several that were really relevant to our conversation today. All right, so let's reflect on the other cues and competencies we've already taken a look at. So our first series, we looked at communication and patient safety. Next, we took a look at clinical knowledge to support patient-centered care. And then last week, we looked at alignment across these specific competencies as it relates to teamwork 
and collaboration. Just to orient you all a little bit, if this is the first time you're tuning in for our episodes looking at alignment across these three competency areas, we have the NLN nurse educator competencies. We also align with the NLN hallmarks of excellence, the QSIN domain, the specific QSIN KSAs, the AACN Essentials domain, and then we wrap up with our teaching and evaluation strategies. This is going to ensure that you have full comprehension of these concepts that we'll be exploring to help you close your knowledge gaps, okay? And the beauty of us taking the time to do this crosswalk really is that it's going to be transferable information for you as you think about your program, okay? Whether you're pre-licensure or post-licensure, this is gonna be information that will really help you ensure that you have a solid framework, foundation, and key concepts that you're integrating across your nursing curriculum based on these essentials, the CUSIN standards, and the NLN nurse educator competencies. Okay, so evidence-based practice. That is our focus for this episode. The first competency that it is aligned with is going to be facilitate learning, okay? And that is relevant for CNE, CNE novice, and CNE CL. But before we go there, you all thought I forgot, but I did not. Let's take a look at our thought-provoking question for this episode, okay? Remember that one of the big focuses also is to decrease your anxiety as it relates to the CNE exam in hopes that we will also help you increase your confidence, okay, and your competence. One of the best strategies to use to help you decrease your nervousness, your anxiety is to spend time in the content to ensure that you're closing your knowledge gaps to the best of your ability. We like to include thought-provoking questions because we know that for many nurse educator colleagues, it's been a little bit, right, since you've taken an exam. And so our goal is to provide this information to you in a very succinct way in order for you to translate it in a way that you can apply it, right? And analyze it as you prepare for the CNA exam. And if you're not on the journey, then we want you to be able to integrate, right? Some of these evidence-based practices that we're talking about. So the title of this episode is, is our goal um, and focusing on how we revolutionize learning with these educational theories and evidence-based practices, okay? And remember, our magic word is alignment. That's what we're all about here at Dr. Sellers Educate. All right, so here's our thought-provoking question. Research findings facilitate the transformation of nursing practice to ensure the highest quality of care is delivered. When planning for curricular revisions, what steps should the nurse educator take to ensure their teaching methods align with the latest evidence-based practices? We have three options to align with the changes that NLN has announced. All of the exams will have three options starting in 2024. So A is rely on personal experience and feedback from faculty when making all curricular revisions. B is to complete continuous updates of their teaching strategies based on current research and evidence. C is to utilize policy and procedures from clinical partners to make recommended curricular changes. All right, so this is hopefully going to stimulate some thought as you consider what the best choice is from the options that you are given. Our objective is that you will be able to demonstrate alignment with nurse educator competencies to increase application and analysis using these three resources that you see here on your screen. NLN Candidate Handbook includes the detailed exam blueprint for each of the three exams. You also have the resource of QSIN, right? We've already been to their website, making sure that you are familiar with the crosswalk. And then third is the essentials. QSIN has already done an amazing job of aligning the QSIN competency statements with the AACN essentials. And so we are simply coming alongside them to map the NLN nurse educator competencies to each of these QSIN competency statements. All right, so now we'll go back to the crosswalk. And I would just add, if you all have any questions about any of the content that we're covering during any of our episodes, do know that you can always reach out to us, info at drsellerseducate.com. All right, so let's keep going um, as we think about what the crosswalk is gonna look like. The next section we are going to continue to focus on is gonna be the nurse educator competency. So we talked about facilitation of learning specifically 
being able to use teaching and learning strategies based on educational theories and evidence-based practices related to education. So it's not enough just for us to memorize our learning theories, all right? We wanna make sure that we're able to comprehend them, to understand those concepts associated with each of the learning theories and what are the teaching strategies that are aligned with each of the theories, okay? So we wanna know the what, the how, the when, and the who, okay? Which we're gonna take a look at a resource to help you identify answers to those questions. Being able to apply those concepts. Remember when we look at the detailed test blueprint, 80% of the exam questions up to 80% could be at the level of application and our ability to analyze the content that is included in the NLN nurse educator competencies. The next one is gonna be facilitate learner development and socialization, identifying our learner attributes and needs based on consideration of learner's diversity, social determinants of learning and past clinical educational and life experiences. Now, how many of us know that the student that we see in the classroom today is very different than the student from 20 years ago, okay? Yes, many of us know how different they are. We wanna be considerate of that and we wanna develop a holistic learning experience for our student that is going to meet them where they are. Now, it doesn't mean we're lowering our standards. We still have the same learning objectives. It's just the path that we chart, the journey we go on with them to make sure they are competent and have met those learning objectives at the end of our course, okay? And then curriculum, speaking of learning objectives, we wanna be able to implement curricular changes using these change theories and evidence-based strategies. The next competency that it aligns with is scholarship, okay? So being able from the CNE detailed blue test blueprint, fostering a culture of scholarly act inquiry, being able to design and implement those scholarly activities and disseminate those outcomes. And then when we take a look at CNE, CNE novice, we want to be able to draw on the extent literature to design those evidence-based teaching strategies, okay? So that is gonna help you hopefully have some specific competencies related to these content areas that we're taking a closer look at as it relates to evidence-based practice. So that's the alignment with the nurse educator competencies for CNE, CNE novice, and CNE clinical. And then next, which there should be another section, let me just shrink it a little bit. You should be able to see one more section. Yes, there it is. Hopefully you all can see it. And that is taking a look at CNE clinical. Okay, so for CNE clinical, it's facilitate learning in healthcare environment, grounding our teaching strategies in theory and evidence, and then being able to apply our clinical expertise in the healthcare environment. That's the other competency as it relates to CNE, CNE clinical that we want to make sure that we take a look at. All right, and that is all about translating theory. When we consider what those teaching strategies are in the classroom setting. We've got to be able to translate those over into the clinical setting. We're coaching our nursing students. We are providing formative feedback so they can make those changes in their patient care decisions and improve the quality of care. Okay, so we want to use what we call clinical reasoning as we are thinking about those interactions that we as clinical faculty are having with our students. And then the next section is the hallmarks of excellence. We have hallmark 2-3, looking at the diverse, well-prepared faculty. I'm really holding ourselves accountable for promoting excellence, creating civil and inclusive environments, and then thinking about to what extent do have we made a commitment to challenge our traditional approaches. We call those sacred cows, right? Just because this is the way we've always done it, doesn't mean the evidence supports us continuing to make those same patient care decisions in our clinical practices. The next hallmark is gonna be 5-1, looking at those innovative evidence-based approaches to facilitate and evaluate learning. We wanna integrate these strategies to facilitate and evaluate learning for our diverse student population, making sure that they're innovative, right? We know that there are specific guidelines that we follow based on the evidence of how we facilitate learning, how we evaluate, and are there some opportunities to incorporate a variety or additional teaching strategies based on our student population? 
The next category we're looking at is QCIN domain, okay, which the definition or the alignment really is with this evidence-based practice definition, which states that we are to integrate the best current evidence with clinical expertise, that's that human element, and patient family preferences. So we want to listen to the voice of the patient or the client um, and their family member as well. The next category is looking at those knowledge, skills, and attitudes that are described in the QCIN competency statement. Now, remember that these are just excerpts of each of these sections. We do want you to take some time to dig a little deeper for yourself to ensure that you have full comprehension of these concepts. Okay, but the next section, we have knowledge. One example is being able to describe EBP to include the components of research evidence clinical expertise, and those patient family values, being able to describe reliable sources for locating the evidence. And then the skill is lo actually locating that evidence that supports the clinical practice guidelines and topics. And then the attitudes really is being able to value the concept of evidence-based practice and the benefit for um, patient care and patient um, outcomes. Next is gonna be the essentials domain. So we have domain one, domain four, and domain two that is aligned with the research and the evidence-based practice focus for this episode. And just one example is looking at domain one, the knowledge for nursing practice under skills. Students being able to apply knowledge of nursing science that develops a foundation for nursing practice. Going back to how we started when we talked about 50% of our new nursing students still struggle with providing safe patient care, right? Because half of them have been involved in an adverse patient event. And then take a look at knowledge, okay? 1.2a, being able to apply theory and research-based knowledge from nursing, the arts, humanities, and other sciences. Well, how do students learn how to do that? They learn it from us, okay? So what we have to do is make sure that we're integrating into our curriculum these really important assignments that will prompt students to engage in these activities. It's not enough just for us to talk about it. We have to push our students to apply these concepts that we're talking about, especially when we talk about the essentials domain in QSIM because it's all behavior, right? These are all competencies that students are required to demonstrate. And then at the graduate level, you will see here that we did include that for um, this episode. So graduate for the graduate crosswalk, 1.1e says that we are to translate evidence from nursing science as well as other sciences into practice. So this is for our graduate level curriculum, right? Our post licensure, we have to think about what are the assignments that we are incorporating that really do require our post licensure, our graduate level students to be able to demonstrate this skill, okay? And then the next domain, domain four, being able to advance the scholarship of nursing. Well, what does that look like? From a knowledge standpoint, students are able to demonstrate an understanding of different approaches to scholarly practice. One consideration that we should think about is when students are posting in a discussion forum or when they're showing up for class, we want to make sure that they are reflecting on the evidence, looking at what the literature says related to the content that they are posting in the discussion form or either that they're bringing to class. So we want to encourage our students and hopefully with discussion forms, that is a standard requirement for it to be a substantive post, right? Because otherwise it's an opinion if students do not include a reference. But we want to start integrating some of these scholarly practices into the assignments that students are involved in their everyday work throughout our nursing program. This type of um, requirement in our nursing curriculum will set the stage, it will set the foundation for our graduates to really embrace the utilization of scholarly work. Okay, that's what we want to happen. And then let's take a look at the next component, which also includes the, the graduate or post licensure crosswalk component, which is 4.1H, being able to apply and critically evaluate advanced knowledge in a defined area of nursing practice. Okay, so we think about our advanced nursing practice clinicians, making sure that this is a part of their curriculum and that they're able to demonstrate this skill um, through validation of knowledge and 
ultimately having those assignments. So again, they can start practicing some of these behaviors that are described in our um, AAC and essentials. Next is going to be domain two, um, specifically skills is 2.5, developing a plan of care. 2.5B, being able to organize that care based on mutually agreed upon health goals, goals and then prioritizing what those patients' needs are. And then we'll take a look lastly at what are some of these resources to help, okay? And you can see that there's a list of other specific competencies or essentials and those behaviors associated um, with this specific domain. All right, so now we're gonna take a look at what are some of the resources that you can take a look at for yourself to ensure that you have clarified any muddy points that you have. So let, let's first take a look on table 14.1 and that's in Billings and Halstead. This is gonna give you an excellent resource that really outlines the five primary learning theories, um, even though there's far more than that, um, but just taking a look at table 14.1. I want to point out with cognitive learning theory, and this is on page 249, okay, again, in the sixth edition of Billings and Halstead, um, and the entire chapter 14 is going to give you some really good information about the what, the how, the why, and the who that we started out talking about, um, just gives you a great foundational understanding of learning theory and why it's so important that we consider the rationale for our teaching strategies that we are including in our teaching plans um, every single semester. Okay, so let's take a look at cognitive learning theory as we wrap up our time together for this episode. So you're gonna see tenants in the middle of the table and then practical use. Now this is a section you really wanna pay attention to because it lists out some specific teaching strategies that are aligned with the learning theories. Let me give you an example. When you look at the three question marks, this is what you wanna consider every single week. What are some of these teaching strategies that I can incorporate into the learning experiences with my students to make sure I am aligning with this QSIN competency statement with the AAC and essentials? And by the way, the whole time you are preparing for the C and E exam, okay? So take a look at one of the examples that I wanna call out, which is going to be Clinical post conferences, okay, they help emphasize connection with what students have experienced that day and the didactic content in a previous classroom learning experience. I like to call it connecting the dots, putting the puzzle pieces together, having the light bulb moment. So post clinical conference is a really important part of the learning experience. It helps our students debrief, kind of break down some of those muddy points or clarify some of the concepts that they may not be clear about. Other resources to help you are gonna be Billings and Halstead, Constructive and Narrative Pedagogy, page 128 and teaching as a scholarly commitment, which we all know as nurse educators, how important that is. Billings and Halstead as well, pages eight through nine. All right, so you're gonna use the four resources we talked about today, which is, are going to include the CUSIN AAC and Crosswalk, Billings and Halstead textbook, the NLN C and E blueprint, and the NLN Hallmarks of Excellence document. All right, so let's see how you did with your thought-provoking question. All right, so if you chose your answer to B, drum roll please. B, you are correct. Continuous updates of our teaching strategies based on current research and evidence. Okay, this is gonna ensure that we are incorporating the latest evidence-based practices. So A was not correct because we don't wanna only allow on our personal experience, right? Because that's limited. And we want to incorporate feedback from our students as well, um, or any other stakeholders that we want to consider. So it's more than just about our personal experience. And C, even though we would hope that our policies and procedures that our clinical partners have in place are current, we can't make that assumption, right? And so we would not want to use that um, resource to help us make decisions for curricular changes. We hope this information has been helpful. Feel free to reach out to us info at drsellerseducate.com. You can head over to our website to see a list of all of the programs we offer at drsellerseducate.com. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.